I kind of look cute today, don't I? Oh my god. I managed to take a thumbnail without dropping any books. Let's roll the intro. Do I look blown out? I don't know. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Money Reads, where I talk about books and things. And yes, I know, I know what you're thinking. Monica, your hair looks amazing. Why, thank you, darling. It definitely does. I embarrass myself on the internet for free. I'm not even monetized. You get to see me embarrass myself for free. But anyway, so it's the new year. Welcome to 2021. Like I saw on TikTok, we're not going to make a big deal about this. We're just going to silently walk into it and hope for the best. That's what we're gonna do. And seeing as like, I had another video planned for today, but I realized that I should probably tell you my favorite books of 2020, 2020. Yeah, not 2021, because I haven't read anything in 2021. There's, you'll see, you'll see me trying to read for 2021. I haven't read a book in like a month, okay? Well, that's not this video. This video is about my favorite books that I read over the course of the last year and as you, as you can see i'm gonna fall down <laughs> as you can see most of them you know because they're right here they're this, this is where my favorite books go and or at least where i try to put them but i was gonna do a top 10. i was gonna be like monica you're gonna limit yourself to 10 books but you know what bitches i've been through a pandemic i've been through a lot this year i'm not gonna be limiting myself this year if i want that second donut i'm eating that second donut and if i want to show you 13 books I'm going to show you 13 books. So I've got my top 13 books of the year. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, most of these are not going to be a surprise to you, but I, 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 I like to think that I can throw a curveball every... No, I can't. I actually, actually, I can because I dated a a baseball player throughout high school like all of my high school years uh, well okay except the last year but um he was actually a baseball player and he went pro so i and he taught me how to throw a curveball but this one is not a curveball my first <laughs> my first favorite of the year is magic for liars by sarah gailey you've heard me talk throughout this year throughout my youtube year dumb about how much I love this fucking book. This fucking book is not Harry Potter for adults. It's not a thing like Harry Potter. Get Harry Potter out of your mind and enjoy this book for what it is. And what it is is a book about sibling relationships. It's a book about how ambitious you can be and how you will never be good enough for yourself. It's a great book to like hype you up except not but I love those books. It's, it, it's, I would call this a dark academia book. It's set in a magical school. There's been a murder. There are some people that are magical. There are some people that are not magical. And it just so turns out that these set of twins, one of them is magical and one of them is not. And the non-magical twin is set to investigate the murder of this uh, faculty member of the school her, te her sister, who is magical, teaches that. And it touches on this idea of how do you feel in a magical world when you are the only non-magical one and how you kind of pretend that it's okay but deep down you wish you were magical too. So it's a really great book. Forget about the mystery. You can solve the mystery like that. I think that the main plot, like the main idea in this book is how do you deal with the fact that you are not magical when other people are? I think that that's a really interesting concept. So I love this book, love everything about it. Pick it up if you haven't. I've been like yelling at people to pick it up for months. This one, I haven't been yelling at you to pick it up for months because I read it, I believe in November, which was the last month I read a book in Darling. And that is Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabeshi Rice. I think I'm saying that right. But anyway, this book, mm, chef's kiss darling it's amazing this book is about a we don't know what it is is it about a pandemic is it about a, a, a nuclear war what is this book about well this book doesn't tell you what but something happened and there are these first nations people in canada living in a reserve now this reserve is really isolated they only get like i want to say a, a like like, um, think of, uh, 
Walmart. Yeah, they get like a Walmart that sometimes stocks things for them and the, the rest, you know, they hunt, they get their stuff, you know, they try to live off of the land like their ancestors did. And then suddenly, like their generators go off, the power goes off, and we never really get an explanation as to what's happening outside of the reserve because there is nobody coming from the outside except one person that comes in and kind of, you know, stirs the pot a little bit. This is such an interesting read. It touches on one of my favorite um, Native American uh, First Nations indigenous to North America monsters. I won't tell you which one because I don't want to spoil anything for you, but this is a lovely read. I, I, I just love this book. Everything about me loves this book and you should try it. It is definitely very current because of everything that's going on in the world and you're going to see that a lot of the books that I pick have a lot to do with pandemics and um, kind of like isolation, the, this idea of isolation. But just so you know, I like this all the time, not just now. But yeah, and um, yeah, let's support indigenous authors. Up next, we have a classic and I, and I picked, I, I have two classics, okay, but I picked this one because even though I said one of them was my favorite classic of all time oh my god I could have picked so many books for this and I had to limit myself so I picked the one that really touched my heart this year and I think it was something that I needed and this book actually helped me understand my mom a lot better it's a whole it's a whole thing it's a whole thing we can talk about it if you want but my therapist and I talked about it already okay and that is Little Women by Lu Louisa May Alcott Do do I have to really explain this? What I will say about this book is if you are a male and you are on my channel and you're not reading Little Women, get that toxic masculinity out of your system, BB, and get this on this shit. It's so good. It's about a group of girls growing up in the 1900s uh, during the Civil War in the United States of America. And it's just amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's one of those classics where you just feel good reading it everything about it feels good you feel good you want to hug yourself afterwards and you want to hug your mom so or or your mother figure or your dad if you, you or or you know your parent or your grandparent you just want to hug someone okay after you read this book so get on the train it's great the movie wasn't that good though oh that's a, that's a that's a um, what's that called? Unpopular Opinion. But I didn't like the movie. Not the new one. The 1994 one. Amazing. Beautiful. New one? What the fuck was that editing? As a video, like, as an ex-editor of videos for TV? Nay, nay. Okay, next classic. Now, I thought about putting <laughs> Withering Heights in here. But honestly, mm, uh, didn't feel like it. So I put Rebecca instead. This is the book that got me to start my booktube channel. Did you know that? I don't think you knew that. Because I was doing like little snippets of like reading all during this on my Instagram. And I was like, I want to share this with the world. So here we are, darling. Thank you, Rebecca. This book is about a young woman. She's like one of these people that used to like tra be travel companions to older women that had no friends money buys you friends you know how it goes and she meets this um older gentleman who falls in love with her except that she has to live in the shadow of his ex-wife rebecca who was absolutely perfect in every way or was she hmm i love this book as somebody that suffers from generalized anxiety though i do throw out a trigger warning for that because this book describes that feeling of everybody hates me, nobody likes me, nobody wants to be around me better than any book that I have ever read, ever, ever. And well, it's all about our unnamed main character trying to just fit into Rebecca's role and trying to find her place in this manner, in this world that she just doesn't get. She's not from around here, you know? She's just not that girl. And it's awesome, it's amazing. I know. But here's the thing, books with Emily Fox, her and I have completely opposite like tastes when it comes to books, but I loved Rebecca, she hated Rebecca, 
it's okay we can have different tastes i still love your videos girl not that you're watching you're too famous for me <laughs> you knew it this is my favorite book of the year by the way <laughs> I think it's about time I tell you these books are in the order that I pulled them off my shelf and I'm because I'm not gonna do like this one was better than this one because no fuck that shit all of these are my favorite I have more but I can't I can't I had to limit it and I thought 13 was a good number because the year 2020 you know had its ups no it didn't it had a lot of downs so i thought the number 13 was fitting i have a whole review about this book but in case you don't want to go there it's about <laughs> isolation and a possible pandemic and then there's this man in antarctica who is alone with this little girl and then there's a group of scientists that are coming back from saturn and they don't know that they are possibly the only humans left in existence will they come together will they be able to communicate who knows? Or maybe we just kind of die wishing we were with other people, not realizing the other people are closer than we think they are. I know that sounds like a like great premise. I just sold that book to you as the most depressing book ever. I promise you it's not as depressing as I make it sound. But yeah, go check out my review. It's up here. Go, go, go check it out. Go check it out. Next. Okay. Hang on, my foot is falling asleep. Okay, so I had to pick one Becky Chambers book because I said, Monica, if you're already picking 13 books, you can't pick all of the Wayfarer series. So I picked the book that whenever I think about it, makes me want to cry, <laughs> but in a good way. And I picked Record of a Space Born Few by Becky Chambers. Now I will preface this by saying that because I am an immigrant, this book hit different. This book talks about the decision to become an immigrant and how you break that to your family and knowing that you're leaving people behind that don't want to be left behind but that understand that you need this to better your life i don't know if that makes any sense to you but it does to me this book is incredible everything about this book is amazing i think this book really talks about problems when it comes to immigration when it comes to like embracing people that come to you for help that come to well in this case your planet or your spaceship or your country for help and what happens when you can't help them or when you refuse to help them and then you're surprised that they become criminals you know this book is amazing the characters in this book is amazing I mean, can we talk about a female female non-tragic romance of two older ladies that still get it on it's in here yeah this book is just about people looking for a better life people realizing that the place that they're at is not necessarily the place where they're going to find this better life and science fiction thrown in this book is perfect i love this book every time i think about it it makes me want to cry so um pick it up and cry with me okay i'm gonna make another video where i talk about haunting books or books that will haunt you forever this shit the only good indians by stephen graham jones will like still haunt me and i read this in the summer like i'm still scared of elk there are no elk around here but if there are i'm running the other direction and being like sorry sir I'm sorry I, I was even in your way, okay? This book is about a bunch of friends that go hunting on sacred ground and they hunt more than they need. And um, the consequences of that are not good. Uh, basically, a, a woman with an elk head starts um, to kill them off. That is not a spoiler. That is literally what happened. Like, like, you can read it in the back. Um, it's scary as fuck and i think it was really well done i love the dual perspective of sometimes you are the elk woman sometimes you are the victims and that helps you to understand what happened why they did what they did and you know it i think it talks a lot about love for your children and and for your traditions and things like that so loved it thank you stephen graham jones Stephen Graham, jo Stephen Graham Jones was one of the first indigenous authors that I read and he opened up 
a whole new world to me that I was just not a, I was unaware of please pick this book up and be scared like me and right now it's a great time to pick it up because it's like snowing outside for most people or at least it's fucking cold like it is here so you're gonna really enjoy it because I read this in the summer and it was like all about snow and stuff and I was like not connecting to that part so I think reading this in the winter months is like chef's kiss Hang on, my foot is asleep again. Okay, sorry, I had to change the angle because the way I was sitting was like, like I can't feel my leg. <laughs> anyway, is this any surprise to anyone on my channel? I hope not, because if this is a surprise to me, well, you know what, if this is a surprise to you from my channel, it means that you're new here. Hi, hello, I'm Monica. So, um, Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Tammy O. Jesus! I love this book. It's so good. This book is about, well, you know, humans destroy Earth because that's what humans tend to do in sci-fi, in case you don't know. Humans destroy Earth and we find a second Earth. Yay! But to get there, it's going to take a bunch of years because that's how space travel works. So they get together like a bunch of kids and basically out of these kids, they 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 raise them in order to find the best five to go up into space because they're gonna go with with five i think it's five adults and five teenagers and the adults are just basically going to teach them so that they can finish the mission and colonize terra 2 and then you know everybody will be happy except will they is there something being hidden also what are you willing to sacrifice in order to never see your family again to never see your loved ones again to never set foot on earth again with a possibility that you might not even make it to this planet this book is amazing everything about it is amazing i love the characters i think that it's a very well written book I wouldn't call it a YA book, I would call this an adult book, but with teenage characters, which is a thing. For if you read this, trigger warning for suicide, depression, eating disorders, and suicide ideation, and possibly schizophrenia. So just in case, this book is full of all of those things. But if you're okay with that, if you don't feel like that's going to be something that is going to be harmful to you, then I 100% recommend that you pick up this wonderful, beautiful story of isolation. <laughs> it's another story about isolation, okay? <laughs> like, all of these are, so yeah. Uh, do, you do You Dream of Terra 2 by Tammy O. Love it. Appreciate it read it also Tamio, i always whenever i tag her and be like i love your book she always is like so nice to me and i'm like i, I got her i got a, a signed book of hers you'll see it in a, in a vlog I'm just, mm, girl i'm so excited i'll be right back because this shit is gonna die so i'm gonna change the battery and i'll be right back okay don't go anywhere but maybe go get yourself a hot drink be right back and we're back darling but don't worry we only have the <laughs> we only have a couple of books to go i haven't talked about this book nearly enough yes i have I, I i have a review of this book i will leave it up here this is born by jeff vandermeer now this was originally going to be my favorite book of the year but then this shit came along and was like hey you know so um this is my second favorite book of the year well that I read this year, obviously, and uh, what, what is this book about? I've talked about it ad nauseum, but just in case you're new, this book is about a post-apocalyptic world, <laughs> and it's called Eco Sci-Fi. So basically, in this case, in most cases with sci-fi, we have machines take over and stuff like that, and um, in this case, it's like nature takes back what we've taken from it and it's all bio engineer and bio chemistry things that monica doesn't understand so in this book we have rachel rachel is a scavenger and she has a boyfriend and you know they live in this like what used to be sort of an apartment building but because of something that happened nature has kind of taken over and there's a 10th story flying bear and out of this then story like, like like it's trying to kill everything and everyone well and, and 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 there's kids with hornets for eyes it's really weird but the main story is about born 
Born is a thing that comes out of the bear. And Rachel takes it on because it looks like a plant, but then this plant starts to become sentient. And then she starts to treat it like a mother would. And she tries to teach it. And I think it's a beautiful story about a mother and a child, really. That's what it all comes down to. She is a mother to this very strange child that can do very strange things. And how raising a child to love and to be and to be loved can really turn things for people you know this whole idea of maybe had this person had the opportunities or somebody to guide them they would be able to do beautiful wonderful things and that there are no monsters but the monsters that we ourselves create Read this book. Read this book for me. Do it for me. Okay? It's it's beautiful. And also, I swear Jeff Vandermeer has the best covers of any book that I've ever seen. Ever. Ever. Have you seen The Dead Astronauts? I bet you have because I put it up here in the most beautiful books I own. Alright, only four to go. This one, I don't talk about, I actually don't talk about this book enough because I, I think I mentioned it once in a wrap up and then I never mentioned it again. But this is one of my favorite books of the year, and that is Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. This book is... I love gentle books. You will see that as a theme with all my books. All, all the books that... Yeah, all the books that I read are kind of gentle. And when I mean gentle, it's like they're not going to be like pow. Um, I don't like to read like military, sci-fi, you know, that kind of stuff. I like slow stories, which, you know, might not be your jam, but it's definitely my jam. And this is Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. This is the story of, what's her name? I think it's Mia or Ni Mila. Mila. Mila just um, aged out of the foster care system, you know, and now she has nowhere to go. Except that she gets offered a job at a farm where people either adopt children that are in the foster care system or they offer jobs and a home to children that have aged out of the foster care system. Now the cool thing about this book is that ghosts in this book are accepted as a part of reality. They're like, you know, like, oh yeah, look, there's a ghost. And it's, it's normal for them. But there's so much more to these ghosts, and Mila forms this friendship with this other little, with this other, with this boy. This, I was gonna say this other boy. There's no other boy. She forms a friendship with this boy, who has also recently been adopted to this family, and they both want to like be more a part of the family than what they are, and you know through, you know the ghosts and through a lot of self-acceptance and a lot of things that I don't want to spoil for you that's their goal that like that's where they want to get or is it you know like it, there there are a lot of points in this book when you're wondering is this too good to be true and so is Mila and you get to hear about Mila's backstory you get to hear about how she feels what she feels and why she feels it and i just i don't know i don't see this book being talked about enough and it i think it's a really brave intelligent and sensitive book i love it i think it's one of the very few um other than the classics non sci-fi books on my list so uh, yeah, if you're looking for a kind of different ghost story, because I have never read a ghost story like this, I would definitely pick this up. Also, cover. Cover. Hello, Marie Antoinette. Who are you? This one you have heard me talk about, um, and again, in a wrap-up, and it's um, Severance by Ling Ma. <laughs> this book is should be just... just called 2020 in a nutshell but not really i mean it's it is about a pandemic it's about a pandemic that starts in china governments don't really take it seriously until it's too late and then you know but the thing about this pandemic i want to make this very clear it's not about coronavirus in this and this pandemic is kind of like zombie-esque i think <laughs> well i think i'm um, i'm i know that the the idea of this pandemic is that it makes you stop caring. Like if you get sick from it, you just continue to do menial tasks 
over and over and over and over again with without stopping like you just don't don't think about it you just do what you're supposed to do and then just forget everything else around you you know kind of like scrolling through tiktok and did i just call myself out i did but anyway um yeah and this is the story about a uh, first generation chinese american girl and how she feels that she has failed her family completely and then this pandemic hits and it's even worse so this book again it's gently it's a gentler story but it does have some like gory elements to it i like to say that this is um dawn of the dead meets uh, a station 11. yeah it's really good i highly recommend it um i just I, I've been I've been loving so many Asian authors lately. I was always gonna I, <laughs> I want to put the memory police in here, but I already got 13 books. We can't keep putting books in here. So, yes, Severance by Ling Ma, amazing, loved it. You should read it. It's got a lot of stuff that I feel that we can relate to in today's day and age. And this was written before the pandemic, so that's even more amazing. This is gonna be no surprise to anyone, but this year I read Dune. Oh my god, how do I, what, what is Dune about? Dune is about this um, messiah named Paul. It's about the house of Trace. Paul is part of the house of Trace. It's a political space opera drama with a messiah aspect to it. What I really enjoyed about this book is number one, the mother character in this book is incredible. I mean, other than her name being Jessica, which I think is really funny because everybody has like, you know, spacey names and she's just Jessica. But um, I guess when this was written, Jessica sounded spacey. But um, yeah, this is about Paul becoming the Messiah and I really enjoyed that process. I enjoy how it was written. I also enjoy the representation of people of color in this book. I enjoy that they weren't the bad guys, which is usually the situation. I did not enjoy the fat shaming though, but you know, it's whatever. It was written by a white cis man in the 60s or something, but um, there is a reason why this is one of the pillars for science fiction and I totally recommend that if you want to go into sci-fi, this should not be the first book that you go into. But if you are already somewhat versed in sci-fi, you know, you've read Ender's Game, maybe you've read some of the Star Wars book or something like that, and you really want to get into hard sci-fi, this is something that you should get into. I actually loved it. The first 300 pages, I was lost. I was like, what the fuck is happening? And then suddenly it all starts to like, you know, like, especially if you love sci-fi, you start to see so many tropes that you've seen before that it's just really, really, really good. So, Dune, loved it, recommend it, read it. I love this edition. It's so pretty, except, it, and it's, it, it's, she's a chunker though, she's a chunker. And the last book that I want to recommend, hang on, I think I can sit on my foot again. Ugh. Is that better? I like this, I, see, I like this, but then my foot falls asleep, so I'm gonna talk about this really quick, is Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. Now, I don't recommend this edition, I bought this edition, hang on, <laughs> I don't recommend this edition, I bought this edition because it was the cheapest that I could find, but I actually have it on my Kindle. Um, Solaris by Stanislaw Lem is about a planet named Solaris and it's about a psychologist that is called there by his ex-colleague or ex-teacher because shit's just going awry, like no, nothing makes sense. And then he arrives and indeed nothing makes sense. And I, what I like about this book is the way that it talks about first contact and how what we believe would be first contact might not be exactly like that you know like what we believe to be sentience might not be what other creatures consider sentience and what we believe is first contact is just our idea of it while they might have other ideas of it this book does have a part where it lags i recommend that you speed read that part and just ignore it and enjoy it for what it really is which is a first contact with aliens 
that is more realistic than any other first contact with aliens that I have ever read because it's always like we somehow have similar languages, similar structures. And what if we don't? What what if why can't a planet itself be sentient, you know? Like we have this idea of what sentience means and this book is just like, no, let's turn that on its head, you know. <laughs> that would have been more effective if this wasn't a circle, but you know. Um I think this book is amazing. Watch the movie. I recommend. This is one of those times where I'm like, watch the movie and then read the book. I think things will make a lot more sense if you do that. Um, but yeah, Solaris by Stanislaw Thom. I loved it. I loved it. Adored it. It was was beautiful. It was wonderful. I really don't want to give too much about it away. I don't want to give too much away about these books because I think one of the reasons that I enjoyed all of them was because I knew so little about them going into them except for Little Women. And I enjoyed Little Women because... What is this hair doing? Sir, you are out of line. Hang on. Now all of the hairs are out of line. And one of the reasons I enjoyed it was because I had already enjoyed the movie and I knew the movie stuck really well to the book. So yeah, those are the 13 books that I enjoyed in 2020. I hope that your reading year was just as prolific as mine as in terms of books that you enjoyed because really I could have made a 20 book, um, 20 favorite books of the year and I would still need like 10 more books. Like I read a lot and I enjoyed a lot but these are definitely the books that I mean I, 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 I am so happy to have had the opportunity to read them. So um, yeah, I hope that this video is helpful somewhat. I know you guys like my reading taste sometimes. So this is what I have been enjoying or what I had been enjoying. We have a whole other 360 some odd days to enjoy more books and let me tell you I'm already reading one where I'm like girl this might make it on the list you know <laughs> that was a great moment for my camera today because I was just saying goodbye to you but basically as I always say without any further ado I bid you adieu with a reminder that I post weekly hopefully three times a week but we'll get into that in my other video and well that i appreciate each and every single one of you don't forget to like and subscribe by the way if you want if you don't want that's fine but i really would appreciate it if you did and yeah i will see you all in another galaxy far far away thank you so much for watching bye i am so sorry for the change in angles in all of these clips